Hafa day and greetings. My name is Keith Camacho and I'm recording this lecture from Tavongar. Um, as you may know, the indigenous Tongva of this place call Los Angeles their home. As for me, I was born and raised in the Mariana Islands. And today my talk is called Peace and Equality in the Mariana Islands and Samoa. I wanna thank President Nishida Matsumi of the University of Ryukyu for inviting me to participate in the International Symposium Lecture Series for the 70th anniversary of the University of Ryukyu's International, um, this International Symposium. I also wanna express my gratitude to, to Dr. Ayano Ginoza, Chikako Takaisu, and other members of the Planning Committee. In part one of this lecture, I first discussed Chamorro and Samoan cultural notions of peace and equality that have long existed before the rise of American and Japanese state propaganda, modern warfare, and mass killings. In part two of this lecture, I then examine how Chamorro, Samoan, and other Pacific Islander youth and their communities engage the COVID-19 pandemic in the heavily militarized spaces of Oceania and the diaspora. Before we begin, please do me a small favor and ask yourself the following questions. One, how do you define peace and equality in Okinawa? Two, how do Chamorro and Samoa notions of peace and equality overlap with yours? Chamorros and Inafet Malik. The Chamorros are the indigenous people of the Mariana Islands, an archipelago of 14 islands located approximately 1,400 miles southeast of Okinawa. Although Chamorros have lived in every island, the community now resides in the five islands with the most resources. They include Guam, Pagan, Rhoda, Saipan, and Tinian. Today, the United States governs the Marianas. As a result, the archipelago is divided into two entities, the U.S. Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands and the U.S. Territory of Guam. Here I have a map of the archipelago. Indigenous origin stories, spirit encounters with every living thing, and contemporary land, dis land claims and land disputes all demonstrate that Chamorros emerge from the land, are the land, and at death, return to the land. At the same time, some anthropologists argue that Chamorros, like Samoans and other Pacific Islanders, share many cultural, linguistic, material, and political characteristics with other indigenous communities across Oceania and Southeast Asia, including Madagascar and Taiwan. The number five, or Lima, for example, is similarly spelled and understood across these different linguistic systems. The scholars call this language group Austronesian. Despite their commonalities with other indigenous people in Oceania and Southeast Asia, the Chamorros possess their own unique notions of peace and equality. Understood as Inafat Maulik, this process of making good or maintaining harmony best captures the Chamorro principles of peace and equality. Each Chamorro clan across the archipelago practices in Afet Malik in an everyday manner. Broadly speaking, many clans also hold matriarchal figures like the grandmother, mother, and godmother in high esteem. Um, Pictured here is the cover of Professor Christine Taitono de Lao's monograph, Placento Politics, Chamorro Woman, White Womanhood, and Indigeneidia Under US Colonialism in Guam. Her book is forthcoming with the University of North Carolina Press. In this study, Professor de Lao examines how and why Chamorro women negotiated and resisted the US Navy's introduction of nursing and medicine to the island of Guam. Professor De Lao also stresses that Chamorro women embodied in Afamalik when they made decisions then and now about the distribution of food and resources among their clans. May men play an important role as well 
Historically, though, Chamorro women wielded much power. Inafat Malik and the related concepts of mamala or shame and respect to or, or respect also impart upon Chamorros a deep and enduring love and respect for the living and the dead. Additionally, individuals and large groups like a clan always constantly negotiate what they mean by reciprocity or the sharing of food, labor, and money across many settings and time periods. In other words, um, many Chamorros then and now always fight over, always debate, you know, um, this notion of reciprocity, this notion of making good and creating harmony. These are not fixed things. Many, many uh, communities, clans, individuals are always debating and how much they should give, how much they should not give, who gave, who did not give, and why. In this way, Chamorro notions about peace and equality have much to do with the remembering and even forgetting of one's obligations and tasks with the wider community. This is why it is common for Chamorros to assist others who once helped them, their parents or grandparents in the recent or more distant past. In other words, Inafat Malik is intergenerational. It crosses time and space. As for people who fail to meet their obligations, they often face public shaming by way of gossip, ridicule, or exclusion. In rare cases, very rare cases, individuals who do not reciprocate encounter injury or death. At its very best, however, Inafat Maulik guarantees gender equality among all people. The election of the Honorable Lourdes Lou Leon Guerrero, the first Chamorro woman governor pictured here, exemplifies this cultural value. Inafa Malik thus aligns with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number five. That is the achieving of gender equality and the empowering of girls and women in the workplace and society in Guam, the Mariana Islands and globally. To recap, our Chamorro keywords include Inafa Malik or to make good. Mamala, or the act of feeling shameful and respect to, or a deep love and respect for the living and the dead. Samoans and Tautua. The nine islands of Samoa are located nearly 5,000 miles east of Okinawa. Their neighbors include Fiji, a former British colony and Tonga, the only Pacific island to remain independent during the American, European, and Japanese colonization of Oceania. Today, Samoa, like the Mariana Islands, is a politically divided archipelago. At the turn of the 20th century, Britain, Germany, and the United States sought to garner the attention of the Matai, or the high chiefs of Samoa. At the time, the copra, sandalwood, sugar, and welding industries dominated Oceania, with the Americans, British, and Germans each competing, for, each competing for land from which to build their settlements. Germany, for example, soon colonized the Western islands of Samoa, followed by the United States seizing control of the Eastern islands of the archipelago. Only the British withdrew from Samoa. As a result, the Samoan community experienced German and American colonial rule. When Germany lost World War I, New Zealand then administered Western Samoa until it became independent in 1962. The former Western Samoa is now called the independent state of Samoa. Two of its islands include Savai and Upolu. Eastern Samoa, what is described as American Samoa, remains a US territory. Two of its islands include Ta'u and Tutuila. Here, the Samoan people are US nationals. They are not US citizens. And here I have a map of the divided, divided uh, Samoan archipelago. But unlike the Chamorro people who rely on their clans, matriarch, 
in, uh, inform, women inform clans, right? Unlike the Chamorros who rely on clans. The Samoan community received guidance from the Matai or high chiefs. The Samoan chiefly system, also known as the Fa Matai, interacts with the everyday official and religious aspects of Samoan society. Reflecting upon the power of the chiefs in American Samoa, the scholars Fa Nofo, Fa Nofo Lisa Claire Uparesa pictured here, and Adriana Maria Gariga Lopez had this to say, quote, although the Matai system has evolved while tied to the idea of nationhood for 100 years, it remains a symbol and practice of Samoan sovereignty, one that precedes the era of colonization and continues throughout the Samoan islands, reaching into diasporic communities in the United States, New Zealand, Australia, and beyond, end quote. Indeed, the Matai or chiefs govern the Samoan community. In turn, the Samoan people serve their families, families they serve their churches, villages, and chiefs. This cultural practice is called tautua, or service. At the core of tautua is alofa, or love. This love, in my view, best describes the ways by which Samoans achieve and maintain peace and equality in their society. One's love for service thus fosters harmony between the chiefs, the family, the village, the country, and above all, a tua, or God. Entire communities subsequently serve the chiefs, men and women alike. In turn, the chiefs distribute food and money to families, mitigate interpersonal conflicts, bestow other chiefly titles, support partnerships, represent families at important functions like a funeral or a wedding, and engage representatives not associated with the village. Reciprocity plays a large role among Samoan understandings of love and service, as does the everyday, and especially the ceremonial respect for the chiefs, the ministers, and for elders more generally. The picture here is a mural created by the Samoan graphic artist, Jason Pereira of Long Beach, California. His mural celebrates the Samoan proverb for service. The proverb reads, Ole ala ile pule ole tautua, or the pathway to leadership is through service. Today, Samoan women and men receive, who receive their university training, their academic training, around the world have also brought much prestige and pride to their families and to the Samoan chiefly system more generally. In fact, some of them are chiefs, but whether or not they hold chiefly titles, university educated Samoans often enjoy serving the people of their workplace as much as they appreciate supporting their families. One example of alofa, Tautua and chiefly distinction is the Honorable Fia May Naomi Mataafa, the newly elected Prime Minister of the Independent State of Samoa, pictured here. Tautua, the Samoan equivalent of peace and equality, thus aligns with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number five, that is, the achieving of gender equality and the empowering of girls and women. Like Governor Luliang Guerrero of Guam, Prime Minister Mataafa demonstrates that indigenous cultural notions of peace and equality can achieve greater equity and safety for girls and women in the Pacific Islands region and elsewhere. To recap, our Samoan keywords include tautua or service, atai or chiefs, and alofa or love. As we transition to part two of my lecture, I want to return to the opening questions of this discussions. That is, how did you define peace and equality in Okinawa? How did you define peace and equality? 
And did Chamorro and Samoan notions of peace and equality overlap with yours? Did they? Did they not? For now, think about your responses. You may also discuss them among your peers. Lastly, I am including, I am including a list of recommended readings in my last slide. Should you wish to know more about the cultural politics of peace and equality in the Mariana Islands and Samoa? Thank you.